Good morning and welcome to the In Quest of Better podcast. Uh, this is a podcast where we have conversations that help agents uh, on their quest to a better life and a better business. And this morning we have Michael Lafito uh, as our guest. Welcome, Michael. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, Michael, you know, to introduce you is um, is a little hard because you are doing so many things and you're doing them all so well. Um, so it's hard to know, like, what is your, you know, your your biggest accomplishment or kind of where you spend most of your time. Um, but I would say having been watching you over the past year, uh, you know, being a, a luxury realtor and running your your luxury designation course around the world um, have really been priorities for you. Yeah, so I, I do wear a couple hats, right? So I'm a licensed real estate agent here in the state of Illinois, service most of Chicagoland, and I also run a consulting, training, coaching business. Uh, actually, catching a flight today out to Sacramento. Brent Gove, who you know, has got a big event out at a Country Club. We have sold out 250 agents. Going to be there tomorrow. That's amazing. That's great. So you've been in the business for about 20 years. Yeah, it's a 2000. I got licensed in October of 2000. There you go. So now, it, almost that, 22. Yeah. And um, so you are, you're a realtor, you're a consultant, uh, you're a coach, uh, you're also an author. Uh, you've written a couple books on uh, marketing luxury listings. Yes, and I was trying to find my copy. I have my coffee and my copy at my other office, but I do have the uh, the the cards. I'm checking that, cards. Remember those? Yes, absolutely. Um, you and I met in Denver um, earlier this year, actually in January. Um, yeah. I don't know how we didn't get on each other's radar before then, but it was such a pleasure. We um, had actually met. We were joining a group of uh, luxury EXP agents for a private mastermind. Um, and then I tacked on an extra day so I could attend your luxury listing specialist designation course, yes. which I thoroughly enjoyed um, and got tons of value from. So, um, you know, I think kind of tell us how you came to from starting in real estate, how you got into the luxury niche and then how you created this course. Yeah. So I actually first graduated college as, as a high school health and PE teacher. So I was a high school health and PE teacher. Uh, in 1998 uh, and a freshman football coach and a couple years into doing that I uh, I had a power washing business in the summer and I would clean and stain people's decks and one gentleman uh, last name Darfler in Naperville Illinois I said hey have you ever thought about getting in real estate I said no and he's like well I own a real estate company and my best real estate agent actually is a teacher coach at North Central College right here in town you should consider it and Three months later, I, I had my real estate license. So I was a part-time agent at first and uh, became, you know, really successful. And and fast forward a few years later, I, you know, didn't think this would ever happen, but I was making more t uh, selling real estate than both my teaching business and my deck business combined. So uh, we just had our first child and my wife is pregnant with number two. So I was burning candles on both ends. So she said, you got to pick one or the other. So I, I, I focused on real estate and this is in the height of you know in chicagoland the recession was still you know the housing market from 08 to really 010 011 was not good and uh but i'm a big believer 20 years from now you'll regret in life what you didn't do versus what you did and so i i just had to follow my passion so fast forward selling real estate you know pretty successful uh but we had a lot of people say mike how are you doing this how did you do it as a part-time agent teach speak help us and so i launched my speaking career to a women's council realtor uh chapter and and um i was teaching other agents how to work smarter not harder and uh and i had a course actually i have a, a copy of it here i had a course that i created um, called the ultimate listing blueprint more leads more listings more close uh, more closings and uh so i had somebody if it's a 497 dollar product dvds and cds and i had uh somebody that ran uh he coached and worked with the top 50 era offices in the country uh it was great man he passed away but he said hey i bought your course it's amazing i want you to help uh some luxury offices that i work with and so i did and that's kind of how i launched the luxury side of things uh, long story short i started working with offices that focused on luxury and i noticed that there were voids in their marketing and their branding 
and, and that kind of launched uh, my my niche into luxury. I this was 2013, 14. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I mean, you know, in our industry, there are some people who are like an overnight success, but most people who reach your kind of level of success really have put in the work. And it sounds like you've really been kind of, you know, hustling all these years. Um, and it's it's by no, you know, um, it's it's no accident. And you seem to be very entrepreneurial, which I love. Like, there's nothing that you won't do, right? And you're- you Yeah, I mean, business. when I was a senior in high school, uh, during study hall, uh, study, study hall, teachers would give me the keys to their car. I would go wash it and wax it. Like, they trusted uh -huh. me, but I was making extra money. But, you know, people in life are always looking for this button here, right? The, that was easy. The easy button. And, and things, and as a former athlete, too, you know, I played college football. You, you work out in the off season, you lift weights, you, you, you know, and I was eating more protein to try to bulk up. And, and you saw results, not overnight, but you saw results. In real estate, you can put a lot of time in and you don't see those results immediately. And so it can be frustrating. Not just real estate, small business owners, you know marriages, whatever it might be, it takes time. And so, you know, one common word that I hear a lot of successful people, and I know we'll talk probably about it, but my 200th episode in my podcast with Glenn Stearns, Undercover Billionaire is coming out soon. But Glenn talked about grit, you know, G-R-I-T, the grit, the grind, you know, uh, uh, Joe Madden, the former Chicago Cubs manager who led us to our first World Series in over 100 years a few years ago, he talked about embrace the suck. You know, that, that doesn't sound, you know, flashy, but it's, listen, the day in, day out, the fundamentals, you know, is what it takes to build a successful business. It's, there's no overnight successes, right. usually. Yeah, yeah. And you're right. There is no easy button and you just have to do the work. Um, and, you know, some people say, you know, some of the most successful people say my life is very boring because all I do is what I do well and I do it consistently and, um, you know, stay, stay on task. So, um, well, you mentioned sports. Um, so I, you know, I've been following you this year and it sounds like, can you tell us a little bit about some of your luxury listings? You've had quite a few kind of, uh, top sports guys in Chicago list their house with you. And can you tell yeah. us about your experience? Yeah. So we've had some successful, uh, I think we've had five or six record sales in the suburbs. Again, we sell in the Chicago market downtown as well. Uh, but in the suburb markets, we've had some record sales. So I've helped, you know, Chicago Cubs baseball players, uh, PGA, former PGA golfing champion, helped him. Uh, Khalil Mack, who was with the Bears, who's now with the uh, LA Chargers. We sold his home. Uh, and we've also helped a lot of, CEOs and former CEOs. I have a CEO that just sold his company. I just put his home under contract this week, helped a former Office Max CEO and Navistar. And so again, it, it takes time. Uh, it's like meet the parents with Robert De Niro at the circle of trust, right? And it takes time to penetrate that circle of trust. People are going to refer you. Um, it, it, they want to make sure you're taking care of them from a confidentiality standpoint also you do what you say you're going to do standpoint so it does take time working with athletes uh working with agents um it can be fun sometimes you work with athletes and you can't you know you, you get calls from newspapers and they want to ask you about it and you, you can't talk about it right because you're in a confidentiality agreement right. Well, so let's talk a little bit about kind of the, the running theme, you know, among all of those homes is that they are beautiful, luxurious homes. And so what do you think sets you apart? Like, what do you do? Um, you know, what is your, um, you know, kind of your high caliber versus traditional marketing that you apply? Give us a few kind of tips and what your secret sauce is. Yeah. And, and I think this is even more mar uh, important in a cooling market, a shifting market and many, many of your audience markets, whoever's listening to this, that's happening, right? There's still a shortage of good inventory in most markets, but we're definitely seeing days on the market increase. We're seeing more price changes. Historically speaking, 33% of homes on the market do a price change before they go under contract. And, and we're seeing that number rise across the country. We're also seeing more contracts canceled today uh, than s since the start of the pandemic, right? So in June, 14.9%, about 60,000 real estate contracts were canceled. So first impressions are more important now than, 
and maybe ever before in a shifting market. So that's one of the things I really pride myself on is positioning homes more effectively than the competition. And positioning is much more than staging a home. It's, it, but but that's, that's kind of the simple answer. So for example, uh, we just put a home on a few weeks ago for uh, 2.7 million and I'm the third real estate agent. And, you know, in real estate, there, there's an old adage sometimes, you know, you've heard this, maybe you want to be the firstborn, the second wife and the third real estate agent. Well, I'm the third real estate agent. And so he's, they're sick and tired of being sick and tired. They're more open to advice. So uh, they did a lot of painting. They did some neutralization. Uh, it's a very taste specific home. And uh, so that is uh, an example of one of the things that we do for our caliber marketing is we have those difficult conversations with the sellers about what it needs to be done to, to get the home sold. And we risk losing clients. I, I know I lost a, a, a listing a few weeks ago uh, because they didn't like my price and they didn't like my suggestions. And I did it in a tactful way. And I have plenty of case studies before and afters and case studies, but still a lot of people have pride and they don't want advice or they don't want to invest money. And you got to be willing to walk away from from clients. Uh, and, and that's in that scenario there, they were overpriced and they weren't willing to replace carpeting from the 1980s. I mean, it was wool carpeting. It looked like it was straight from the 70s. The bathrooms were dated and they didn't want to do those things. And in a hot market, perhaps, but they were on the market last year and it didn't sell. So you have to be willing. I, I, again, I, I'll ask a seller, can I be direct with you? Most of the time they say, yes, they don't want somebody to beat around the bush, but do it in a nice way, in a tactful way and back it up with case studies. So getting back to your question, you know, really how we position homes. We're in a dating industry. Basically, people are, are on an app, i.e. their phone on Realtor.com and they're swiping left or swiping right at a bunch of homes as they're searching at night or, you know, while they're at work and you want your properties to pop, to stand out. That's the first rule of thumb of marketing. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm sorry, I think there was just a delay there. So sorry about that. Um, no hopefully problem. we're back. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so we actually, you know, I'm in New Jersey and we are in an affluent market as well. So, you know, I learned a lot in your course, but there were also some things that I was already doing, right? Kind of going the extra mile um, to position homes, understanding your clients' needs, listening, um, and and positioning it right because it is it is a competition, um, and I actually can totally relate to what you just said because yesterday I texted a client and I said good luck um, because she uh, did not want or believe any of my suggestions um, and she's been trying to sell her house herself and it's not working. Um, and it felt really good to be able to just say, you know what, I wish you the best of luck. Um, I can't help you, you know, if you don't want to take my advice, like I, so anyway, so I, I feel you on that. Um, and yeah. it is, it is important to have those conversations. I think a lot of agents who were, who try to tap into the luxury business are somehow intimidated, um, you know, and are scared to have those conversations, which ends up hurting the client because then what needs to be said, isn't said. And then, you know, you, you don't you don't have that great first impression. Um, so you do a lot of video as well. Um, I mean, you're pretty comfortable in front of the camera. Um, talk to me about kind of when did you start embracing video and um, you know, do you do a, a luxury video for each of your listings? Yeah, so we did, we, we really launched our first lifestyle video. Like I was the first guy in this area that I know did any drone videos back in 13. Uh, but our first lifestyle video where I brought in various film crews was actually, it was almost eight years ago now. And so uh, we were definitely the first in the Midwest and uh, we brought in two film crews and four exotic cars. I rented a horse and brought in actors and actress and uh, used props. And uh, I believe um, in a difficult market, most agents cut back on marketing and that's a big no, no, in my opinion, you have to, you have to invest more. And so, you know, we do incorporate video in a lot of our properties. There's some properties that maybe they don't have that many unique special features. So 
uh, we'll incorporate video, but maybe not a lifestyle video, uh, but we'll incorporate video in some capacity. You know, there's there's lots of different styles of video, right? There's the walking tour. Some people are getting a lot of positive uh, results from that, whether it be on TikTok, a live stream, a, a YouTube, their website. Uh, others do the the old school videos, which I don't consider videos, which are photos that move around, but it's not a video, but it, it's, it's a video, but it's really not a video, right? Yeah. Uh, cheesy elevator music. And then others are putting together, you know, videos that, you know, you're highlighting the best features. I just, you know, a lot of, most of my videos, I'm not in those lifestyle videos. I did a, a walking narration video recently and it was well received. So I'll probably do more of those, but Video is not going away. The consumer likes it. They want it. In the luxury space, I recommend video over these virtual Matterport, Matterport type tours. On some properties, both are required. Uh, I have some clients that confidentiality and privacy is important, so they don't want the virtual tours where you can go room by room and and see where the staircases are, or you know, yeah. that type of thing. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, I think, you know, you've done an exceptional, exceptional job um, kind of, you know, elevating the standard for, for luxury marketing in our industry. Um, and I really commend you for that. And I'm so happy that your course is popular. I know that you're selling out kind of all over the states. I keep seeing you, you know, traveling to new cities and, and, and giving your course to rooms full of realtors. So I think that you're, you're helping to elevate the industry. Um, but let's kind of talk about the industry a little bit and, and kind of the traditional brokerages versus, um, you know, where both you and I work, which is eXp Realty, which is uh, a global company, which is also a, a, the first cloud-based real estate company ever. Um, and so what, you know, what drew you to eXp and how have you been leveraging eXp in your business? Yeah, so, um, so a couple things. So first off, um, I believe that an agent is the brand and the brokerage could be there to support them. But many people, many agents feel like the brand defines who they are. Uh, so last July, right around this time, I was being interviewed by a seller, former CEO of Office Max, and uh, I was late to the game. I was referred to him, but he already had interviewed a couple agents and was close to making a decision. And then my name was given. So I go on this listing appointment and I had my official start date with um, EXP was August 6th of 2021. And so this was around July 20th of, of 2021. And so I already knew I was going, but I hadn't officially made the switch. So during that interview, he said, Hey, Mike, I know, you know, I did my due diligence on you. I see you got a lot of videos. You do some training. Looks like you do some speaking got a great website, but I know you don't have a lot about at properties who I was with at the time. And it's a great company, no, no ill will. They number one in Illinois and uh, they, they've done some great things in the luxury space. Uh, they dominate luxury in Chicagoland. So I actually left the number one most per name in luxury for a company that doesn't have much of a luxury presence in Chicagoland. On this appointment, he, he said, I noticed you don't have a lot about at properties. So Hey, I let him know about, hey, I believe it's not the market, it's the marketing and I'm the brand and here's what we do and all this stuff. I had no collateral about EXP, nothing. And uh, and he still hired me and we got his home sold. And so I share that story with you just to reiterate that, you know, as an agent, you know, the brand is there to help support you, but it's not uh, the end all. Uh, and so in the month of March this year, uh, I don't have the exact tally, but I believe in the month of March this year, uh, I think over $40,000 I saved uh, based on me capping at EXP. A cap, for those of you that don't know, um, won't bore you with details, but you know, I was on a, a certain split. I capped and then I kept 100% uh, of my commissions. I saved over $40,000 uh, in the month of March alone versus if I was with the other company. I mean, that's that could be a full-time assistant salary. That could be a lot of investing in print marketing, digital marketing, a billboard, whatever it might be. And so to me, that former company didn't provide 
leads or anything like that. It was a great company, some great marketing, you know, brochures, et cetera. But it, it, it didn't define who I was. I was a top luxury agent before them, and I knew I'd be a top luxury agent after them. Yeah, no, that's great. And I think, you know, for me, I think a lot of agents do have that fear. Uh, and I joined EXP just earlier this year in January. Uh, I left um, a big brand name as well called Sotheby's International Realty, where I had been for almost a decade. Um, and when I walked out the door, um, I walked out with two 1.6 and $1.7 million listings um, that I was worried. I didn't know if those people were going to come with me or want to stay at Sotheby's. Um, and they both said, Caroline, we're, we're, we want to work with you. The brand doesn't matter. So, you know, that really was a great way to start my career at EXP. And it kind of, um, you know, put to rest that, that fear that, you know, you have to depend on a traditional big brand to be able to build your business. Um, when really, if you're doing, you know, if you're bringing the value, if you're investing in your business, if you're doing what you need to do for your clients, um, there will be loyalty there and you will achieve success, yeah. um, you know, and you, you can spend your marketing dollars how you want. Um, you know, you don't necessarily um, have to do the cookie cutter things that these traditional brokerages are paying for that may not work, but work to promote their brand. Um, whereas here, I can really select where I think my marketing dollars for this particular property will be best used. Yeah, um, exactly. So I mean, I, I like the consumer, you know, if a hairstylist leaves one salon, goes to the other, many women will follow that stylist. If a financial advisor leaves Northwest Mutual and joins Raymond James, but you had a relationship with them, many times they'll take their business with them. You know, it's if a if a banker or a lender leaves guaranteed rate and goes to some other company, many times you have a relationship with them and you'll go with them. So no different than real estate. I, and you, real estate agents have the relationship. The the consumer trusts you probably more so than the brand because very rarely are they calling an office and and doing floor calls and saying oh and they get assigned to realtors usually yeah. relationship based referral based especially in those upper price points yeah relationships are definitely key um let's talk a little bit about um your podcasts um you know your luxury fridays i mean you've been so consistent with those and um you know you've been interviewing some amazing people um, but you piqued my interest when you said you interviewed Glenn Stearns. Can you give us a little bit of a sneak peek of your conversation with him? Yeah. So we launched our, our show, uh, I think four years ago, we're about to release our 200th podcast. It's on yes. iTunes, Spotify. It's called luxury listing specialist. We, uh, we bring on agents, strategic partners, team leaders, newer agents. We try to fill voids within the industry. Although we focus on luxury, it does apply to many price points. And our 200th episode, I brought on undercover billionaire Glenn Stearns, and and Glenn talked a lot about his journey, you know, his journey uh, from the grind and grit, you know, to turbulence, uh, you know, life is, you know, relationships, marriages, business, uh, athlet, athletics, you know, is 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 like turbulence. You know, I'm jumping on a flight later today, and hopefully we don't have any turbulence. But a pilot will try to avoid turbulence, but there's still turbulence sometimes. No different than business and life. Um, so Glenn talks a lot about that, um, and I believe, like Tony Robbins says, success leaves clues. So even though I'm not in the mortgage industry, I can learn from Glenn Stearns. I can learn from a successful business person. I can learn from an entrepreneur success leaves clues and so that's what we we talk about in our in our show that's great well i will make sure that the link to that interview is in the the podcast notes for this um for this episode um well is there any kind of final points that you would say to an agent that um you know that wants to break into luxury um like what what would you recommend that an agent do to kind of start um uh, their niche in in luxury yeah. So what I would tell an agent is you should consider diversifying your portfolio. If you look back over the last year, 12 months at how many homes you've sold, you know, are they more entry level starter price point? Are they average price point? Are they high end? I define a high end as a home that's two times the average sale price in your market. 
Are they luxury? We define luxury as a home that's three times the average sale price in your given market. So there's really four price points, as I mentioned, entry or starter price point, average, which you can find the average price point from your MLS, a title company, your real estate board, high end and luxury. And so I tell agents to diversify your portfolio in a hot market, but also in a shifting market, right? Don't put all your eggs in the, the one basket, so to speak. And so most agents don't go after the high end and luxury because of the following limiting beliefs or excuses. I got to be licensed X amount of years before I sell luxury. I got to be with a certain brand. I mentioned to you, our brand in, in my market, every market's different, right? Century 21 doesn't have a huge presence in my market. It's an amazing brand. Some markets, it's number one. No different than EXP. EXP doesn't have a huge luxury presence in Chicagoland. In other markets, they do. I wasn't worried about that. So even if your brand, your brokerage doesn't have a huge luxury presence, don't let that be a limiting belief that you can't be that rock star agent in your market. And so there's so many limiting beliefs or excuses that agents have. So I, on a recent podcast, I talked about in a recent video blog, I have educational videos. We release them twice a month. You can go to Lux, L-U-X-E, Redefined, Lux Redefined to watch those. But on a recent vlog, I talked about OPP, leveraging other people's properties, not talking about the rap song from 1991, 92 from Naughty by Nature, but leveraging other people's properties. And so if you go to other people's broker open houses with their permission, of course, take some photos, maybe shoot a video. And now all of a sudden, every if you're going every other week, people are scrolling up and they say, wow, man, I noticed Mike was always touring amazing properties. And that's number one tip. Number two tip is they can host open houses at other people's properties within your brokerage. Some states allow you to host open houses and other brokerages. There was an agent last summer uh, Dugan, who was an intern for me. He just graduated college, got licensed now in Tennessee. He just hosted an open house, $4.2 million. He's only sold one home in his career and it was to his girlfriend. Her parents bought the house. So on his own, he hasn't sold any. And he just hosted an open house, $4.2 million. Somebody else's listing in another brokerage. They had 20 buyers through there, 20 buyers this past weekend. Even if 5% of them are buyers, that means one, one out of 20, that's a $4 million buyer. That could be a six figure weekend for him. Okay. Yeah. So leveraging other people's properties is something that we teach. And then the third would be leveraging other people's successes within your brand. So if a top EXP agent sells a multi-million dollar property in another market, a feeder market for you, and you get their permission, post it. Say, hey, look what a colleague of mine just did. Don't forget, I'm only licensed in New Jersey or in Illinois, but we can help you in all 50 states. I could part, I can connect you with a partner and then you get a referral fee. Yeah, absolutely. And I would add a fourth, which is they should sign up for your luxury designation course. <laughs> you know, that them on the right path. Yeah, we, we're helping agents break down barriers from all brands, all brokerages. We teach a self-paced, you can go to luxurylistingspecials.com. It's a self-paced course and we do live in person. Our next in-person training is September 21st in Milwaukee. Again, about a third of agents that come to our trainings fly in. You flew into Denver and then about uh, two thirds are local. Yeah, no, it's great. And then you get to, to network with other agents, you know, in other markets um, and make connections. And um, so it's, yeah, it's an amazing opportunity. Well, Michael, thank you so much for your time. I know you've got to run. So I'm going to let you go sell some million dollar houses in Chicago land. Um, but thank you so much for your time. And uh, and again, thank you for the course. I really enjoyed it. And, um, and I, I practice some of the things that you taught every day here in our market. So awesome. Well, I keep raising the bar. Appreciate what you're doing for the industry. You have a, a, a lead with a giving hand mentality. And I appreciate that about you. Thank you, Michael. All right. You're take welcome. care. All right. Bye bye.